Good evening from the Oliver Farms in here in Elizabethan, Tennessee. I have scoured the YouTube for a how-to bridge video. I don't need the Golden Gate. I need a private driveway bridge. I found lots of Golden Gates and lots of engineer things that were super duper cool. And they might have helped me a little bit, but uh, this is a private driveway bridge that I have built here, me and my wife, in Elizabethan. And uh, by no means is it a perfect bridge. By no means is it something that has been constructed and designed and overlooked a million times by an engineer. But it is a bridge nevertheless, and it is a way that you could build a bridge if you would like. So here it is. This bridge is 14 feet wide. It is 25 feet long. I've got 12 inch I-beams. Um, I bought two of the I-beams from a local guy here that just had them at his farm. And I bought three of them from a place called American Steel in Bristol, Tennessee. Um, the beans were expensive, guys. I mean, just be sitting down when you get the new quote. I would recommend if I had to do over again, just go ahead and bite the bullet and get all the same beams. Um, try and, you know, you can get like my beams are 12 inches exactly on the outside that I got from Facebook. I ordered 12 inch beams and it says on the side 12 inch beam. It is not at 12 and a quarter. So your, uh, my bridge, I had to uh, do some, some fab welding. Um, I had to weld these little pieces of metal to uh, make it level, which it's stick level now, but it's just something that looking back, I probably wouldn't have done. So anyways, here we go. Um, the beams that I ordered, they have a half inch web and a half inch flange. They're heavy. Um, and what we did was, is on the foundation here, this side looks a little better probably, yeah. So uh, we dug a foot below the water line, okay? And then once we dug a foot below the water line, we poured our footers um, and then we put block all the way up to ground level. Um, don't let your block or your bridge especially be lower than the ground that you're trying to drive on top of. If you drive down to a bridge, it will crack it. So um, this is not something that I knew. This is something I was told by an engineer friend of mine that works for TDOT. So what we did was we put five beams across this 14 foot bridge. I would not go wider than that unless you get some high, heavy duty beams. Um, you can kind of get an idea here what this looks like. It's an I beam, not an H beam. Don't buy an H beam, you need an I beam. I beams are a little taller and they usually have a little bit thicker flange on them, a little thicker web. So what I've been told. So after we dig a foot below the water line and we pull, built the block up to ground level, you can see this is the ground. The block is level. We filled the block up with concrete. So now this is a solid block of concrete. We put cat block over top of that. And then we put eight inch block on top of that to make it flush with the metal decking. What's gonna happen is we're gonna pour a six inch deck from the, from the I-beam, six inches up from there. The deck is going to go eight feet this way into our ramp. The ramp you'll drive on top of and then you will drive on top of the concrete, obviously, ramp on the other side. I went ahead and anchor bolted these things in. Um, you can kind of see one right there. Um, you only need to anchor bolt one side in. Your bridge needs to move a little. If your I-beams are secured on both sides um, and they have no room at all to give, your concrete will bust. So be a little careful with that. But uh, that's a good idea on how to, how to make a bridge. I'm sure I left a lot of questions out that you might have. Um, this is not an easy task. This is a real deal project. Hindsight, what would I do different? I would pour one pour for my foundation. Um, I would make a form and I would put my beams down in that form and I would pour over it. One big pour. I've had concrete direct come out twice already. One for the foundation, once to fill up this concrete block. Now I'm going to do a third to put the decking on. I would have done one pour right here. I would have made a form, one solid concrete pour. I would also probably put um, some wings on the outside, on the front and the back. 
Um, you may think, like I did, well, I don't need wings on the back. What you do, uh, what happens is, is the water comes off the corner of that block right there. It swirls right there, and it digs out the foundation. So it's not a big deal because my water here is nice and slow. Uh, it comes up like maybe twice a year, but for the most part, it's like this. So no big deal. If you are not that person, um, then that swirl can cause some major issues. Something else, um, whenever you're pouring the solid foundation, the solid footers, I had to wait forever for this water to kind of dry up so I could put block down. Um, and luckily my water level fluctuates. If your water level does not fluctuate, that's gonna be a lot harder for you. Um, so just so you know, might be a good idea to um, do one solid pour for the foundation. That's just a lot easier in my opinion. So there you go. Leave your questions in the comments and good luck. This is Oliver Farms in East Tennessee. Got a new construction we're working on right now. Catch you later.